Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Asabi, and today we're going to figure out how to dramatically increase your credit score in the short term. So a lot of people ask about this and we kind of figure we cover it, especially since we talk about a lot of different credit cards and how great they are and you need a good credit score in order to get those great cards. So if you are new to our channel, we are all about how to optimize your credit cards for the short term and long term. So basically how to get free travel out of them or how to get cash back out of them. If that sounds like something that might be interesting to you, maybe subscribe to our channel. And if you don't want to watch a video, you can kind of skim read the blog post that we have down below. It should be the first post. To increase your credit score, we have to understand what factors drive them. So we're going to use a free resource called creditkarma.com. It's a free way to check your credit score and also the variables that affect it and also what percentage they are and how it breaks down. So a lot of these other banks, so like Amex, Discover, and even Chase offer free credit scores, but they don't really show you what breaks it down. They kind of tell you what issue might be affecting your score. So maybe you have too few accounts in the recent history, or maybe you have too short of a history for your credit card accounts. But what Credit Karma does is it basically tells you all the factors and how you score in each category. The one kind of complaint people have about Credit Karma is that the scores aren't necessarily accurate, so they're approximations. But to me, I think it's a really good way to understand your score, which is the most important thing. The three things that most affect your credit score are utilization, derogatory marks, and also payment history. So utilization is how much limit you have and then how much of it you use. So if you have, let's say, only one card and you use $100 of $1,000, then you have a 10% utilization. If you have two cards, so let's say $1,000 per card, and with one of the cards you have $100, that's a 5% utilization because it's 100 divided by 2,000. For payment history, you're looking at whether you're paying your bills on time or whether you are late with anything, and derogatory marks are any defaults. So if you have a credit card that you end up not paying off and they end up sending it to collections, that would be a derogatory mark. A medium factor would be the average age of your accounts. So if you had two cards, one at two years old and one at four years old, the average age would be three. And again, if you have more cards that are older, they kind of build a firm base for your cards. Because again, if you have five cards that are 10 years old, when you add cards that are new, they're gonna have less of an effect versus if you only had one card that was 10 years old. The two low factors are total number of accounts and inquiries. With total number of accounts, most people kind of assume that the more cards you have, the worse you are. And in reality, it's actually the opposite. The more cards you have, the better most banks see you because they know that you can manage your credit very well and they can manage multiple cards. So again, who would you trust? One person who has one card or the person who has maybe two or three, but they're all paid off completely either way. The person who has one card, again, maybe has a $1,000 limit. The person with two or three have maybe 20,000 limit. And the idea is that you can basically manage your finances. And I mean, you can make arguments that well, the more limit you have, the riskier you might be because if you decided to max out your credit score and run away, then that's a big risk. But again, the rational person, most people wouldn't really cash out like that. So it's not really a risk. So for inquiries, it's basically how many times you inquire to get a credit card. So every time you apply with Chase for a credit card, they'll do a hard inquiry on your credit report. So it shows up on the report. Now that we have a baseline understanding, the real goal is to find out what factors you can actually optimize. So for high impact, Derogatory marks and payment history, those are pretty obvious. If you miss a payment or if you have a derogatory mark, they basically plummet your credit score, so you need to make sure that doesn't happen. So I'm under the assumption that you are, again, paying off your cards on time and not having any derogatory marks. So that's kind of the baseline assumption I have. The way to dramatically grow your credit score from that is to focus on utilization. So zero to nine utilization is excellent, 10 to 29 is good, and 30 to 49 is fair. If your utilization is between 50 and 47, that's poor, and 75% and up is very poor. If you want your credit score to go up dramatically, you want to stay in the excellent range, so the zero to 9% range. And again, most people are surprised when they do this for a month or two and they see their credit score go up 20 or 40%. It really depends on the baseline where you're starting from, but I've advised people who have like maybe a low 600 score and they start doing this for one or maybe three, four months and they see their score go up from a low 600 to either a low 700 or high 600, or maybe even like 720 is the highest I've kind of seen from that jump. So it really is a big factor. If you are someone who carries a bank balance every month, so again, let's say you keep a credit card, you pay off only the minimum, then that's actually really bad, plus you're paying a ton of interest. So your first goal there should be to basically not carry a balance, find a way to somehow pay off your credit cards. And again, there's different strategies. I might try to cover this in different videos, but the idea is that you want to aggressively pay these off as much as you can because you're, if you're paying something like 20%, even low interest ones like 5 or 10%, it's not really worth it. And the main problem is because there are no other investments you can make where you're making a risk-free 5% return. 
So even if you look at something like a bank account or CD from a credit union, you're making maybe two to 3% at most, and that's still locking up your money for a whole year. And right now you're basically paying 5% over the whole year. So let's say you pay off your cards in full, great. And then the next step is kind of how to optimize your utilization. So if you are someone, let's say you have a $500 credit limit and you're using 300 or maybe 400 of it, that's 60 or 80% and you're kind of falling into poor and very poor categories. And the main problem here is that you're still paying off your cards in full, so you don't keep a balance after the statement, but on your credit report, it looks really bad because again, they're putting you in the poor category because they're overusing your limit. But this is kind of a chicken and egg problem because you can't apply for other credit cards if your score's too low, unless you apply for like secure cards or really bad cards. So there are a ton of bad cards, I'm not gonna deal with them today, but there are cards that don't make sense. So you're kind of in this situation, so what do you do? So the easiest way to do anything about it is to actually prepay your cards. So let's say your credit card starts on the 1st and the closing date for the statement is the 31st. You don't actually have to wait until the statement closes to pay off your card. So again, let's say on the 15th you decide to pay off the whole balance and then once the 31st rolls around, your utilization will actually be zero. So that's really beneficial because instead of having a very poor grade, you're having an excellent grade. And that seems very simple, but by doing this, you're increasing your credit score dramatically. Another benefit is that it helps you budget a bit better. So I still do this myself, so I pay off my cards every week. And the idea is that I know how much money is in my bank account, how much of it I spent on going out for groceries or for entertainment or whatever else. And again, if I spent a lot on restaurants this week, maybe I cut back next week or the week after that because I overspent this week for like my internal budget. And I don't have anything written down specifically, but I think the more you see something, the more likely you are to be cognizant and aware of it versus if you only check it once a month and you're like, oh, I'm surprised at how much money I spent. Like I'm never really that surprised compared to other people I know who wait until the end of the month and then you have a bad surprise there. If you're wondering if there are any negative consequences of paying off your cards early, not really. I guess you're losing out on free interest in the sense that you didn't need to pay two weeks early, but you did, so technically you're losing that 0.0001% of interest you would have made that is probably immaterial. And the other part is cycling. So this probably doesn't apply to most people, but again, if you have a very big credit limit, so let's say you have a credit limit of $10,000 and you spend that and then you pay it off in two days and then you spend another $10,000 and you pay it off in two days, and then you keep doing that every few days, then the bank gets kind of worried because they're wondering how you're spending all this money. It won't really apply to most people. And again, like even when I first had a credit card, I was maxing out my 500, I'd pay it off in a week and then I'd keep doing that. So for most people watching this video, it's a non-issue. For the medium impact item, so the average age of your accounts, in the short term, there's nothing you can really do other than maybe not applying for a credit card because a new application would dramatically lower your average depending on how many cards you previously have. If you only have one card right now, let's say it's two years old and you apply for a card, it's two plus zero divided by two, the total number of cards you now have. So your average age drops from two to one. For the low impact items, so the total number of accounts and total number of inquiries in the last two years, basically just don't apply for cards and you're fine. You can't really increase your total number of accounts though without driving down your average age of accounts and the number of inquiries. In the long term though, there, there's obviously a different strategy. So if you're looking at a big picture, it's a bit different. But in the short term, nothing you can really do here. To summarize, if you want to dramatically increase your credit score in the short term, keep paying off your cards, don't default on any of them, and keep your utilization low, even if it means paying off your cards before the due date. Again, maybe you pay it off every week or every two weeks or whatever else. Depending on your credit profile, you might want to hold off on applying for cards for a little bit as well, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward. I think a lot of people focus on number of inquiries and they're like, hey, don't apply for too many cards if you want your score to go up, which is true. But again, utilization really matters and a lot of people forget about it. So I hope this video was helpful and let me know if you have any questions down below. I'm a pretty big nerd, so I like to think about how to optimize my credit score because your credit score drives your ability to get these great cards that have great offers. And again, we're probably gonna be doing a different video on how to do long-term strategy. So long-term it's a bit different, but still focuses on, again, paying off your cards, obviously, but keeping a low utilization. If you're new here and you like our content, maybe subscribe to our channel and check out some of our other videos. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.